Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Sam Norris here, the property investors broker and owner of Grand Union Finance. And on today's property finance video, we are talking all things development finance. So stick around and I'll go through everything you need to know about this amazing finance tool. <laughs> Property is about patience. Hi guys, it's Sam here. Thanks ever so much for sticking with me. Now, before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and the little bell uh, because then you'll get notified of all new videos that are coming your way. We do two a week, um, all covering all sort of all sorts of types of finance and uh, and property related stuff to get your teeth into. Don't forget to hit the uh, the like button, the thumbs up as well because that just really hit, helps me reach a different audience. Um, so before the little break, there I was saying that on today's video we're going to be talking all about development finance which is an incredible um, finance tool for investors and uh, one that I think gets uh, a little bit misunderstood at times but it definitely forms part of the bridging family so um, during this video I'm just going to go through everything you need to know about how you can actually get development finance what development finance is and if you stick around all the way to the end of the video I'm going to give my breakdown of all the bits of information that you need to put together about your property project in order to actually get ready to submit a full application for development finance so stick around to the end for that but let's get started um so what is um development finance it's well it's pretty much a bridge to be quite honest with you it forms part of the bridging family and it's a, it's a form of short-term finance not only does it help fund your purchase, uh, but it also helps fund the cost of the works as well, which is massively, massively important um, if you have got quite a costly build project on the go. Now, where development finance differs from a bridge is that a bridge is only really used to acquire a property with. So if you're buying a property for 100,000, you might get a bridge for 70,000 and you make up the difference yourself. Now, development finance, Will include that part but it will also actually allow you to borrow some cash to cover part or all of the cost of the works that you're going to do to the property now this can actually range from a very small amount of work you might be maybe buying a house and just modernizing it um, all the way through to potentially buying a large a site and you know, building hundreds of, of houses or flats or, or something like that. So it, it really can cover sort of all aspects of this different uh, of these different types of projects. Now, development finance lenders, how they actually calculate their loans is based on what the value of the property is going to be once any work or development has actually been completed. So um, we call this the gross development value or GDV for short. Now. When we talk about mortgages or bridging finance, we talk about loan to value, the loan as a percentage of the value of the property. Now, bridge, uh, development finance is um, based on what we call loan to GDV, so a percentage of the gross development value. Typically, this range, this sort of tops out at about 70%, um, but in reality, you're probably looking for closer to 50, 55 or 60% to get the best rates out there. This amount will then be split in two, into our acquisition fund and our works fund. The acquisition fund works very similar to how a bridge would work. It's based on the on the value of the property or the purchase price, and it will be, a, and they will lend a percentage of that. Whatever remains of the of the fund um, of the facility can go towards the the works. So, if there is enough to cover a hundred percent of the cost of the works, then the lender may well be able to cover 100% of the cost of the works. But it's very important to get all of the figures laid out very early doors so that we can actually assess how much goes into each pot. Now, I should mention at this point that the, um, that the funds that are released to cover the cost of the works, not only are they usually released in stages, stage payments, um, so that could be two to five stage payments potentially depending on the size of the project um, but they're also released in arrears now this is something that a lot of people don't know but they they expect that if the first tranche of funding or the first stage of funding was fifty thousand pounds they will get that 
day one to begin the works. No, you will need to fund that first part and then it will be reimbursed to you once that part of the works has been completed. Hopefully that makes sense. If you've got any questions on that, drop a comment below and I can always elaborate. Now, what do development finance lenders look for when they are determining who is a good borrower? Well, number one on that list is definitely going to be experience. Do you have any experience of working or, or having or, or being in charge of these types of developments? Um, and generally, they split the experience into two sort of categories. One is related experience and one is principal experience. Now, principal experience will be you know, you have been a developer and you have developed very, very similar sites previously and you've got a track record of um, of successfully um, doing these types of projects before and, and essentially being the project manager, the principal developer. Related or relevant experience is where perhaps you have some experience of working on these types of uh, projects pre previously or be, have been part of this type of project previously. So maybe you're a surveyor, maybe you're a project manager, maybe you're an architect, maybe you're a construction worker or a, worker or a builder, and um, maybe you're like me, you're a, a mortgage broker and you've worked on, on these kind of uh, projects before. That sort of experience is also very important and that is something that lenders will also take into account, but it's not going to be weighted as heavily or as important as the, um, you know, the principal uh, experience that you're going to get from actually doing those kind of projects yourself. They're also looking at the project itself, you know, where it is, what it is, and what kind of profit margins it's going to generate. Typically, lenders want to see that there is a profit margin of at least 25%. It's at that stage that they believe that this project is, is viable. And for them, um, it constitutes a lower risk because they're always thinking about how they're going to get their money back. And um, if there isn't a very big profit margin in it, there's a good chance that if there's a dip in the market or there's a problem that occurs throughout the build, and which you know there often is, they may not even be able to get their money back or you may actually lose money on the project. No development finance lender wants to lend on a project that potentially can lose money. So they usually look for you to have at least a 25% profit margin before they will be happy to lend. And as I said there before, uh, the other thing that lenders are, are keen to know uh, uh, in advance is your exit strategy. Typically, this is going to be that you're going to sell the site or you're going to refinance it and keep it long term as an investment. Now, if you're looking to sell it, um, lenders are going to be making predictions on the future of the property market. Is it going up? Is it going down? If it looks like it, there's a chance it might go down. Lenders are taking this into account and maybe they're going to look for you to work in some kind of contingency into your GDV uh, when you're working out your figures. Um, often what also helps is when you are actually putting forward your proposal to get this kind of finance, that you actually have your sales team in place already, or at least have an idea of who is going to market this project or property on the back end when you're looking to sell. So having an agent there with information on, on what they're going to do and, and a bit of a marketing strategy will actually help professionalise your um, proposal for this kind of funding. Um, and to be honest with you as well, I think it's just a really good idea to have that anyway. If you're looking to refinance and hold the property, whether it's a single unit or multiple units, then obviously your exit is going to be to refinance. Now, if this is the case, many lenders might want to see some form of evidence that actually the kind of mortgage lending that you're going to need, whether it be residential or commercial, is actually viable for you before they'll actually lend you the money. So worst case scenario, they may want to see some form of decision in principle, but a lot of the time they will look for guidance on the kind of lending options that are available. That's when a broker such as myself comes in handy because we can actually look at that. And in any case, we're often looking if the exit is sale, we are uh, sorry, exit is a refinance. We are often looking at what this exit is going to be as part of our research for the for the development finance anyway, so that we feel comfortable that you are actually going to be able to get yourself out of this finance that we're putting you into. So something there to bear in mind as well. Now, I did say at the beginning of the video that I would list at the end um, all the kind of sort of documentation that you are going to need to put together when you are looking to apply for development finance. Now, what I'm about to tell you is not just relevant for development finance, to be honest with you. I think these sorts of things are really handy documents to get used to and familiar, familiarise yourself, if I can get my words out, familiarise yourself with anyway, um, because it's just good when appraising uh, potential projects. Now, talking of appraising, the first document that you need to get very, very familiar with is a development appraisal. These are the highlights. These are the top level figures 
you know, your acquisition costs, your works costs, your sale, selling costs or refinance costs, all of the figure, facts and figures that, that come together to form um, effectively what your project looks like in numbers. OK, so this is where you will be able to work out roughly what your profit margin is likely to be. And lenders are going to want to see this before they, they do sort of anything else. This is the basics that they're going to need in order to uh, to even decide whether a, a project is viable or not. I've actually got a video and if you click up here, you'll be able to uh, get hold of it now where I actually go through a development appraisal um, so that you know every single thing that needs to be in there. So check that out because that'll be really helpful for you. Now, the second thing on the list is a schedule of works. And what this is basically is a breakdown of all of the different works that need to be done pretty, and it's done on a pretty minute basis throughout the entire project. And as I said, that could be just renovating a house um, or it could be um, converting a, an office into flats or it could be building, you know, eight, 10, 20 uh, houses or blocks of flats from the ground up but all of the works need to be listed and their associated costs spelled out as well to give us not just a, a complete list of everything that's going to be done throughout the project but also um, a, a final figure of the costs. This should obviously work into the development appraisal that you've already put together. Now it looks a lot better as well if you get a pretty sophisticated contractor to put this together for you. If you've got it on their letterhead paper, um, then that actually looks pretty professional and that helps with the, the proposal. So just that's a little side tip for you. Um, but again, this isn't something necessarily you will put together yourself. This really is what your contractor or your builder will put together for you. Some builders might call it an estimate, um, but really it's kind of a fleshed out um, list of all the works that are going to get done throughout the entire project. Third on the list is your previous project schedule or property CV, as we call it. Um, this basically is what we were talking earlier in terms of experience, a breakdown of all of that. So every single project that you've worked on, whether you've been the principal developer or not, um, your involvement and the facts and figures associated with this. Again, I've got a little video here. So if you click above, you'll be able to get an, a greater understanding of the importance of building a property CV. But this is the third document that you really want to familiar, familiarise yourself with. And document number four, the last and potentially one of the most important and something you can actually start putting together now is an assets and liabilities statement. Now, it is a big myth within our industry that if you buy a property in limited company that somehow sort of pushes you uh, away at arm's length to the, to, the, to the project or to the ownership of the property. It's not really the case. When a lender is making a decision as to whether to lend on a particular project, they are still looking at you as the um, ultimate beneficiary owner or UBO, um, as the director of the company and the shareholder of the company. You are responsible for this project and they want to know if you are financially sound. And an assets and liabilities statement is a quick snapshot to show, you know, your overall wealth and, you know, effectively how strong your position is. This should include all of the assets that you currently own, whether it be property or otherwise, any um, liabilities that you have, any um, outstanding balances or mortgages, loans, credit cards, anything like that, all listed below, um, all, sorry, all listed uh, together to give you effectively a net worth. Um, and to be honest with you, most people, I believe, whether you're whether you're starting your journey right now or whether you're you know ten years into it, if this is if you're not keeping an up to date assets and liabilities on a pretty regular basis, you know you could probably get away with updating it every quarter if you're not doing too much, or if you are continually flipping properties and moving stuff about, you might want to be doing it potentially once a month. This is something you should be doing. It's a really, really basic um, sort of standard practice when it comes to looking after your personal finances. Think of it like a balance sheet for a business, but just to do with you. That is a really, really important document to start getting your head around. Um, if any of you guys are keen to get a template of that, by the way, um, put a comment below with your email address. and I'm happy to send you uh, the template that I use um, for you to start, start doing this. So there you have it. That is basically development finance in a nutshell. This video has been longer than my usual because there's a lot to, to get in. I probably need to break this video down into, into 
longer um, sort of split up videos, to be honest with you, because there is a lot in here. But the purpose of this video really was just to give you an overview. So I really hope that it's been useful. If it has, please do share it about. You can hit the share button below um, and get it across you know, any social media platform uh, that you enjoy using. I really, really would appreciate the uh, the, the sharing to, to help me grow this channel and to get you know as much of this information out to as many people as I possibly can. Don't forget, you can go and follow me on Instagram at the Sam Norris. You can follow me on Twitter at the Sam Norris as well. You can also follow me on Facebook, um, which is Sam Norris Property. Um, and you, of course, can listen to the Game of Loans podcast that comes out every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. All of the links to all of those are down in the notes below this video. As I said, guys, I hope you have a really successful week and I've enjoyed this video. I'll catch you next time.